this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV. And this morning we have with us Rick Bedencourt, and he's going to talk to us about his new book and some other things, the writing lifestyle. Hi, Rick. Hi. So, tell us a little bit about your new book. Well, Tion Brock, and it is a gay romance. Um, it, it takes place mostly in, uh, but it also in, in New England. Um, it's about a, a a man, Tim Tim Benton, in his infatuation with theater and divas, and also the bag boy at the local grocery store. So uh, it's a fun, fun light read, and it was a lot of fun writing it. I got a lot of help from my team, the people that I work with. So it was, it's been a lot of fun. Great. So tell us a little bit about your writing. How do you do that? Do sure. You? Sure. Um, for for Tim on Broadway, and actually for a lot of my writing, I get a lot of inspiration from music. So in this specific book, uh, show tunes are uh, were, were, were an inspiration, but also uh, because, of, because of the nature of the, of the story. But I also, I'm also a big Bette Midler fan. Um, so uh, Bette Midler plays prominently in Tim on Broadway. In fact, she has a, an appearance. Um, but uh, whenever I'm, whenever I'm, looking for a story or or it's music that seems to to inspire me so uh, there's a song at the end of the, of the rose one of the Williams films and it's not the rose but it's the, the finale the final song and um so that really inspired me to to uh to write and it does with a lot of my my stories. I'm, I'm also working on a short story right now for a Christmas anthology, and um, that will be coming out this year. And that too was uh, inspired by uh, by Sam Smith's "Stay with Me," which is a, a hit out now. Uh, but um, for some reason, just music sort of uh, always sort of gets me going and, and sets the scene for uh, a scene, and then ultimately for the story. So. So the scene kind of, uh, you write the scene first and then work a story around it? Yeah, yeah, sometimes. Um, although with Tim on Broadway and some of my other things, I have been outlining, which is I, I uh, shied away from outlining for, for the longest time because I just wanted that flexibility to be able to just write sort of where I wanted. But I, I really find the exercise of going through outlining really helps helps me with boundaries it helps um, me to, to really set the plot although i don't stick to it specifically i use it as a loose guide so it's sort of setting the setting the, the the skeleton if you would and then you know you're putting things on it even though in the outline it may say yeah by the end of the book i'm going to be at this point from tim on broadway that didn't happen <laughs> so <laughs> But at least it, it, it got me thinking about things in a, in a, a higher level. So, um, and I found an exercise that I really like that I do in literally like half an hour to an hour. I'll outline a whole book sort of in um, free form and then go back and just sort of tweak it here and there, but then use that as I'm writing the book as a guide to, uh, to help me stay on, stay on pace. So, um, like I said, I tried not to outline for years, but finally, okay, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm glad I'm glad I did it because it does it does help, like I said. But um, but yeah, so that's been been my latest sort of way about writing. So, I've often wondered. I got the program Dramatica Pro. Yeah. And it helped me to analyze my book, but I noticed that. I analyzed it to death, and I never ended up writing it. That's yeah. That's I actually my very first novel is the prequel to um, 
to Tim on Broadway and literally has probably 20 versions and still is not done. Because <laughs> every time I look at it, it's like, oh, goodness. And plus it was the first thing that I wrote, so I, you know, I needed a little bit of help. So, um, but I, I do one day want to, want to publish that. And, uh, right now I'm going to start workshopping it with my writer's group. I have a writer's group that I work with here in Florida who's been very helpful in getting feedback. To, you know, we just went through my story, my Christmas short story that I was mentioning. Um, but getting readers feedback prior to publishing is just so critical. So, because you can know what you meant when you write it down in the page, but not till you hear somebody else's reaction to it, do you really understand what the, what the, how the reader is, is, is getting it and to have, uh, you can do it online. There's great groups online and I've had some great beta readers uh, that I found online. Really? But also, where, where would you suggest um, people? I, on Goodreads, goodreads.com, uh, uh, you know, some of the forums and the groups in there, and people are just really helpful about and wanting to read um, books, you know, beta books uh, as a beta reader. So, um, and I've met some really great people as a result of that, too. So, okay. uh, definitely worth, uh, worth doing, but yeah, getting that. Getting feedback and getting somebody's thoughts about how they interpret your your work is, is like I say, it's just critical. I mean, even especially with editing as well. I mean, not that you would send a, your book for editing for betas, but um, I often joke that I'll read it. I'll have read over my material a dozens of times and consistently miss the same exact typo or the or, you know, there's a dog missing or a not. It's like, I knew what I meant, but it's just not yeah. in there. So I'm just like, I, you just can't edit your own stuff. I mean, you can, it's just, you have to go to somebody else. And I don't really think you can be content with just one editor either. No, exactly. I'll send it, I'll send it to three or four people and they all find something different or they're, uh, there's a, a different, well, there should be a comma here, or no, there shouldn't be a comma here. <laughs> I'm, I I I'm just not a good. Yeah, I'm just not a good. I'm not good with commas. It's just, <laughs> like oh, the pain of my existence. I think it it stems from fifth grade. One time in fifth grade, I got hall time because my uh, teacher uh, said, "Well, sometimes commas are you can use them if you want, if you don't." So I decided put a comma after every single word in the practice guide <laughs> you know in our exercise and i got shoved out into the hall for being a wise guy <laughs> like but you said i thought it looked good man. <laughs> every single word that, good that, way. that <laughs> wore it out you can do <laughs> like, a funny you know. poem like that i thought I it know. good like, that way <laughs> i get kicked out of the fifth grade good lord but so, so were I you think a that clown in school. That's dramatized me ever since. I really wasn't, but I think I was. I was a rebel that day for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, that was too funny. But anyway. Well, God. tell us a little bit more about Tim on Broadway. Sure, I'd love to. Um, Tim on Broad. Tim is is an overweight virgin, and he's in his twenties. As we had mentioned earlier, he's gay. Um, but what I find interesting is that the people that have really loved this book aren't gay <laughs> and uh, find something about it that's endearing to them, whether it be that he's overweight or that there's something to identify with his plight in life of getting through his his issues. He's, we learn as the story goes on that he's scarred through some, some trauma. He struggles with religion on a couple of reasons. One, because of his you know, being gay, um, but also because of this trauma that I don't want to reveal. Uh, but, um, but there's something identifiable about, about him that makes him, makes him lovable. 
and he may not fit into the classic romance uh, genre in that he's not a you know spelt a lot of the a lot of the gay romance books out there are, you know the ribbed stomachs and the and the beautiful man and and he certainly doesn't fit into that. The straight ones um, are the same. They're all gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. A lot of the romance are about about gorgeous men, but or gorgeous characters. Um, and he's not ugly by any means, but it's but it, it gets to the qualities of what a person is inside. And he's really inside. He's really a, a decent person, and then he finds interest in somebody that actually is on the outward appearance is good looking um and then as we as the novel progresses we learn that that even that person is um you know has good qualities about him that at first maybe doesn't seem as, as so um in harvier is the bad boy that i mentioned earlier you know he's had his his own issues in life and may not come across initially as as the best sort of person for um, for Tim or uh, for a relationship that is um, but we learn some 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 nice qualities about it as a as a progressive. So uh, it was just a, it's a fun book. I I loved writing it. Um, I'm right now working on season two, although I had to put it aside because I got this Christmas anthology I'm trying to get out by the end of this month. Um, uh, but um, I love the characters in it. I love what I like about, I mentioned my, the book that I, my first novel mm -hmm. is sort of the prequel to that, and that's the story of Carolyn Sawyer. Carolyn Sawyer is the diva, uh, the performer that is in Tim on Broadway. That Tim is Tim is anxious to see her in concert. She's sort of the Greta Garbo of the divas. She's uh, you know so gone, you know, so recluse, lives on an island in Maine. And even though she's fantastic, a fantastic talent, she very very rarely gives concerts and just uh, is sort of in hiding, if you will. And um, so it's announced that there so she's giving a once a one time only concert for a benefit and. Tim just wants to go and not, <laughs> so badly, and uh, but he doesn't have the money. He was recently fired because of Javier and the grocery store um, that Javier works at. Uh, so it's so the initial in, first half of the book is him trying to get tickets to see to see Carolyn Sawyer, uh, but the um, the prequel is the life of Carolyn Sawyer, and it's from. From a couple, it's written in the third person from a variety of point of views. Uh, but unlike Tim on Broadway, Tim on Broadway's first person and written from Tim's point of view. But uh, the prequel is about Carolyn's uh, play in life and growing up uh, in the 70s and 80s and her trying to be a performer and, and the traumatic events that she had as, as a, as a Teenager and whatnot. So it's um, one of the, you know, it takes place, a lot of it takes place in the North Shore. I grew up in the Salem area, Salem, Massachusetts area. So all of my stories have some connection, even if it's just a very loose connection to that area, just because it's, it's home and I was moving. Um, but uh, in the, the well, filming a movie in Salem. So that's, uh, that's how it opens. And Tim is coincidentally from Salem, Massachusetts as well, even though he lives in New York. And uh, so there's that, there's that connection to Salem. And I always like uh, Robert Parker, uh, the author of the Spencer for Hire novels, who has unfortunately passed away. Um, he always embedded in his stories, stuff about uh, or real locations in Boston, and I always found it as I was like, "Oh, I've been there. I, I know exactly what you mean." So I, I like to try to do that. Yeah, I think people you like know, that, especially if they're from that area. It also gives you a marketing 
tool a lot of those places will put your book in their store yeah yeah because i've got a lot of places in salem and, and, uh, and like robert parker there's tons of uh, boston references so yeah and that is a gonna use that. i should write that down i haven't, I haven't <laughs> gone to all these stores and you know what i have your uh, store in my book well, maybe you want to put my book in your store. <laughs> your store's in my book. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, good idea. Okay. But, um, Rick, tell us a little bit about your blog. I think some of the, uh, is it about writing? Um, it is. It's. It's. It's, uh, it's. I actually have two blogs, and I started the uh, rickbettencourt.com is my basically my main website and my blog, and it's. A lot of it's about my writing and about writing, um, but I started, started this sort of space, oh boy, probably 10 years ago when blogging was just coming out, and I started a blog called Bandit Talks, and it was really just a journal type of a thing, but um, it has since been taken over by my dog, Bandit, it's, it's named after him, Bandit, Bandit Talks. So, uh, Bandit has now taken over that blog again and is now most recently wrote and is promoting his father's <clears throat> his father's work on his on his uh, on his blog. But, um, his human father. His human father. <laughs> <laughs> One of his human fathers, I should say, because he does have two. <laughs> I like it. What's the address for that one? That one is BanditTalks.blogspot.com. Okay. So, yeah, that's a um, that's a lot of fun. That that blog. And Rick has an article on our blog, tvbackstory.com, dot com, mm -hmm. and links to. I guess your link is just to your first blog. Yeah, it's the to, it's to the Rick Bettencourt. Uh, yeah, the Rick Bettencourt dot com blog, and um, in my Twitter account as well. Okay, uh, great. So. Anyone who wants to get a hold of Rick or read more of his writing, check out the article at tvbackstory.com. Follow the links to his blogs, and thank you for being with us. Excellent. Well, thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. All right. Great. Thank you.